Welcome, Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your, your hosts, hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. Oh my God. <laughs> What's your cotton picket problem now? That poor package of yours. It's been abused. I'm going to point something out. We drive. From our house to the place where the package originated in 20 minutes. Maybe 25 if it's trafficy. So the worst. Let's go with 30 minutes. Okay. Why not? Because yeah. what we're about to talk about, 30 minutes, an hour, six hours, it's minuscule. Quite honestly, I could have driven there. to M&L in California and back. So. At that plus range. Are we going to name the company? Sure, why not? What's the So yeah, quilting. Okay. So they do this great thing where they like do like auctions online or something like that they, with like product. They do YouTube sales every Tuesday and Saturday. And every once in a while they do lots of sales where they're every single day. And what they do is they'll hold up a bolt of fabric or like a pre cut bundle or something. And it's X dollars, and they have 13 of them. And the first 13 people that give them number, whatever it so is. they do it like Home Shopping Network. Exactly. So they're That's first, really how smart. many people? I'm then, liking these people. I'm liking these I think they're really smart. And they ship to Canada or the U.S. from those sales, too, which is rad. They added wow. 30 million people to their market like that. Anyway. That's super smart on their part. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so last month, every day in August, they had a sale. And they called it their annual bazaar. And then on the last day of the month, they did a final sale selling all of the packages that people hadn't paid the invoices for. So they're mystery packages. Right. And they would hold them up and then people would bid on them. And they were at like a great discount. The catch was that you don't see what's in the, package. in the package. Right. Some of them went so fast. So anyway, this was a box of that mystery package. Z that I was very excited about, and it was a surprise, so I was extra excited about it. I had a thought. Did you? So they're auctioning off things that people didn't pay for? Correct. That people didn't pick up? Didn't or, pay for. Okay. <clears throat> then what stops me from putting together a package, giving bogus information, not showing up to pick it up, and then picking it up in the auction? I'm sure you could. But they don't tell you enough detail about what's in them for you to really be able to tell unless you ordered something super obscure. There was probably 20 or 30 that just said three one-yard cuts. Because basically it would be possible, but it would only be foolproof if you put in a lot of effort and it's not really worth the effort because the edge that you're getting is pretty much zero. So who cares? Yeah, I, I have to agree with that. But then, as I said, this place, so yeah, quilting, maximum 30 minutes from our house maximum it right. will not take i'm telling you there could be a helicopter land there to medevac someone away and we would still make it in 30 minutes i'm sure of it i am and before anybody calls me lazy for getting this shit shipped they only ship from their quilt sales they do not allow yeah. you in store pickup because of the that it would be a logistical it enables them, them to do a lot more volume so i had to have it shipped and i shopped on a sale on the tuesday and then I shopped on the last day of August mystery package sale. And my Tuesday one came like a week ago, almost like it was yeah. so fast. And then this one had shipped a day or so before. So well, let me set the stage I'll paint my visual picture for the listener. This one over here, Toria, is a stalker when it comes to packages. Hundred <laughs> percent a stalker <laughs> when it comes to packages. And what's Especially really if it's something I'm excited about. What's really funny, and she may or may not know this. But sometimes I can tell when she has some secretive thing she's trying to pull off to surprise me with. And I don't know what the thing is, but I get the idea that something's happening because she's stalking, but she's not telling me what she's stalking about. Which is interesting because on the one hand, I like that because you're not you lying stalking to me. About? But you're not lying to me. But on the other hand, it's funny because then I go, she doesn't really want me to know that this package is coming or whatever it is. And I don't really care what it is, but whatever. And it's just funny. I've noticed that. But the bottom line is, it only had to go from 
30 minutes away in Las Vegas to North, to Las, Vegas. North Las Vegas. One would think that there is a truck that travels around the post offices in each little region and takes the tr- this package from one place to the other. So at the most, I would have expected it to go from where it was to a central location to the North Las Vegas location. That's what the first package did. It went from them to the main U- Las Vegas post office distribution, which is in Green Valley Ranch, to North Las Vegas, out for delivery, delivered. And that makes sense. However. That totally makes sense because you're part of Las Vegas, so you send it to your distribution center. Then your distribution center sends it to North Las Vegas. Simple. Right. So what happened with this package? So it got picked this up. This poor package. It looked a little beat up when it got here. It did. <laughs> it went from so yeah, quilting to the distribution center in Green Valley Ranch to another distribution center in Las Vegas to North Las Vegas to St. George, Utah back to the Las Vegas distribution center back to North Las Vegas and they finally delivered it. Imagine. It went all the way to St. George and you pointed out that I'm a stalker which means every morning if I have packages that are coming I look at shop I see where they're at I look and see if they're coming that day I see that it's in St. George, Utah and I see that it says preparing for delivery. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, she was tripping out. She was like, what the hell's going on with my package? I contacted. So, yeah, they confirmed they sent it to the right address. I was really unhappy. Yeah, it's frustrating, though, because I get it. They're following a process. They're a smaller area. And they're delivering to a little bit bigger area. Rather than deliver the mistake directly back to North Las Vegas, they had to send it to the distribution center, which then distributes it out to the correct directions. I I don't disagree with any of that. None of that annoyed me when I saw it. I basically knew it was it was what was going to happen. It went from North Las Vegas to Saint George, Utah. It's a complete flipping mystery. I have the screenshot. It even Saint George Post Office Distribution Center marked it as miss sent. So some dumb useless pile of crap that works in St. North George. Las Vegas was like I'm going to send it to St. George because I'm too dumb to put it on the right truck <laughs> and then St. George goes why the hell do we have this package it says North yeah. Las Vegas and then like I said followed the process send it to the main regional spot because not every North post North office spot. is completely inept but our post Ours office is, is completely useless useless the 2024 word of the year it has been decided. It's the word. Useless. In early this year, and usually we until December. Yeah, we're not even to October yet. But useless seems to be the theme of a lot of services lately. It really Maybe does. it's just the September word of the month. We'll see how the rest of the year I mean, is. last time we needed a ride share out of the housing complex. He was so dumb. He was so clueless. Yeah. And then he's arguing with me about the code that we had just tested an hour before. Yeah. Maybe less than an hour. Yeah. But he was blah, blah, blah with that. And he was useless. And then post office, useless. You met with a supervisor that was useless. Previously, we have it in another episode. We talked about the original experience with a supervisor who was completely useless. useless. And then this last guy was also useless. And the lady in line tells us that the postmaster is useless. Did we talk about what happened with my package that was going to Texas? Yeah, we talked about how how it went missing and how you had to call them. But see, we have a resolution to that. Tell them what happened. It was delivered. (laughs) Finally. Finally, one day just started moving through the system. (laughs) Guy who guaranteed us that it had left there. It hadn't. It it was a thin package. It had fallen behind something, and they obviously don't have a good process for bothering to check. Now, don't jump in until I finish this point, because it wraps up in a nice, neat little bow. If what the guy said was true, and it had moved out of there, it would have been delivered long before you got all the stuff saying it was marked delivered. It just so happens that what actually happened was it got delivered the same time that you got the message saying it was marked delivered. Meaning that's the thing that happened. It took forever to move through their system. And it was sitting, you're probably not wrong, 
It was sitting behind a cart somewhere. Yeah. And then someone moved the carts to clean up and found that there. And at least give them credit. At least they cleaned up through a periodic time frame. Yeah, it was 30 freaking days, but they did it. Yeah. They make me, the, the USPS makes me mad because they keep raising the prices. And when you complain about things, they just shrug, whatever. And I want to be clear about something. There's exceptions because these guys really are the exception. Because most people don't complain like this about their local post office. But they might have a crappy post. Everyone complains line. about this local post office. I everyone think it, does. I think it's funny. I'm going to leave you a terrible review because you've wronged me today, kind of person. Don't judge. Anyway, so I had gone to the USPS, our post office, on the Google, and I was going to leave them a nasty Google review about how dumb they are. But then the Google reviews that were there were so hilarious. I couldn't bear to leave another. <laughs> they had two kinds of reviews. They had one star reviews, obviously. Yeah. They had five star reviews. And the five star reviews were clearly from spam bots or people they had paid to leave the review. Okay. Because one of them was like, this is a great place to meet up with friends. <laughs> and the reason it makes me laugh so hard is because the time right before that we had been at the post office, we made friends with chair ladies. Yeah, it might be the great place to meet up with friends. It's a good slogan for them to use for that location because you do meet up and make friends with people in the line because you're there for so long. Do you know what that post office needs? It needs one of the train people who like cold water, candy bars, only two dollars walking up. You, you, that's I would make one simple change to the post office system. You could even call it two simple changes, but it's really one because the one forces the other one. So it doesn't count. I would take package people and merge them into the, like normal post offices do yeah and merge them into the regular line and the blue door line would only be for people one of two things this is two ways to do it you could either make it cash only transactions or you could make it that person's a runner and when a package receipt comes over the counter you tell them to go get in that line over there that person runs and grabs the package and brings it to the person, and then you're out of here. You're you know why the second way? Capable of putting you know why the second way would work? work? I got to tell you this. The reason the huh. second way would work is because the customer kind of feels like they keep moving through the situation. Right. So they went to this line, waited a little bit. The guy handled business and said, "Okay, cool. She's getting your package. Go get it in that line." Now you move to another line, and you're following people in line, so you're making friends as you're going through. It's a good experience. I have a better idea. Shut why, down the post office? That'd be a good idea. Why not just implement something that looks like Amazon lockers? And when they leave you your parcel card in your mailbox, because your package was put in the parcel locker. It's going to be in locker number 14. And yes, what a brilliant idea. You're the smartest person I know. I think this is actually what I think. That whoever is the Pope of the USPS. Okay. That needs to hire as a consultant for six months, whoever is the Pope of shipping at Amazon. Yeah, you're not wrong. He'd whip them into shape. They're just so inefficient. You can basically see the money being lit on fire when you enter most post offices. Something like the Pope of Amazon, which they've clearly got a system. And we've noticed this. They have one problem. That's what they're, I think it's called their DSP system. Where it's like their Uber of Amazon oh, yeah. deliveries. They have a problem with that one because those people don't follow any directions at all. They don't care where they put your package, whether it could be right out in plain sight for someone to steal it from you. Imagine what it must be like. People must really make use of Amazon lockers in a place like New York City, where there's a lot of places that are like right there on the street. Right. You'd lose your package for sure, 100% right. every time. So it's that's a brilliant idea because it takes the pressure off the post office and then it takes the pressure off of you. You don't have to worry about going there at a time that you can't make it. Maybe you could go there because the lobby's open 24 hours, bro. So you can go there anytime you want. And there and has it. to be a solution to the poor people waiting six to nine months for keys to their effing mailbox. Yeah, but stick to the point you made. The box on the other side of the box, simple technology. 
when they set it up with a package, it starts a countdown timer. And then it changes to like red or something like that. And they know, oh, this has been sitting here too long. They take it out. They leave you another notice that they try to deliver it. They leave you one more notice that says, this is your final warning. It's going to be held for 24 hours at the post office. That's it. Put it in there. Timer sets 24 hours. Done. Love it. I have another brilliant solution for the USPS now. I think they should charge you a deposit for your mailbox keys. Yeah, that way you have to bring it back. That way, when you bring it back, you get your money back, and then they have keys for box number 43 sitting there waiting for a new person to move in to that house and be like, hey, I moved into this house. Can I have the keys for box number 43? And for the people out there in the crowd who always say, why do we have so many, quote, stupid, end quote, laws? Here's why. Now, in that situation, the only way to make it work, though, is you have to make duplicating the mail key other than the postal service a felony that way i Isn't have that already who knows i'm just saying it has to be if it isn't it has to be and if it already is well, it's covered. but it has to be because otherwise what stops you from you've paid for one key you've told them about one key but you had three others made How, what stops you from doing that and them not getting their key back i don't see how that's any different than what's currently occurring but at least four different names of people Mail, come to our house now, even two and a half years after living this. here. And they have the mail keys from when they lived here, most likely. Technically, no. They were supposed to change the lock. And that's what we were waiting for was the, quote, USPS locksmith, whatever that believe that job is, to come out here and change the lock. If you look, those locks unscrew, physically come out, you put a new one in. There's a 0% chance they changed That's when it was brand new and we got it. Was it? Yep. So that's what they do. And it takes... Flipping forever. Six to nine months. But here's how it helps. You charge $50 fee for the key. That's a decent amount of money, right? Uh huh. If you don't bring the key back in a certain amount of time, I now have to get the other people their key. I can pay someone to hurry up and get their booty out there. You don't think I could find a locksmithy type person or a handy type person who would want to make $50 a mailbox? I just took my labor down to zero. And see, this is the point. At every turn, all you have to do is talk about the problems as they are, and the USPS could be made a better and better place. But nobody cares. They need to hire the consultant from Amazon because I yes. think Amazon has you the most efficient shipping out of anyone. Yes. And they're a private company, which is... It's what the government needs to listen to more. Right. We love to brag about the innovation in our country and how innovative these companies are. But then when it comes down to listening to what they say, we tend not to. Right. And by we, the government, we just decide, nah, we have a better way. We're just going to do it our way. How hypocritical is it to brag about how Amazon has revolutionized, revolutionized shipping. shipping? Yes. How cocky is it to brag about that? But then put your pride aside. And I think that's a brilliant idea that you had. And that, that alone would fix all the problems. Right. And you know what? It would also make Amazon better because Amazon's going to find out some of the efficiencies that actually are baked into the USPS because it's not an entirely crap system. I think it's amazing that you can mail something here today and it can be in Germany by tomorrow. That just blows their, my mind. Their expensive package delivery is not bad. Right. But well, that's, everything that's not point. expensive package delivery is horseshit. But that's my point. They should all share the same spot in the service. But one takes, if you don't pay as much, it takes longer for it to get there. You know why? Because it's not a priority. We're not jumping on that mother today. It's going to wait until tomorrow when we have enough. And uh -huh. we'll take it. Anyway, the point being, there's so many inefficiencies, not just in the USPS, but for now, the USPS. That we've now deemed them useless. I promise everybody we have a new target to complain about next week. I hope so. Do. <laughs> oh, do we? Yeah. Oh, that should be fun. I, I don't think I know who this is. Oh, so to it. Hot Wheels Monster Trucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say anything about it because we're going to end right here. But that was sad to me. And you'll find out in the next episode why it was sad to me and what it is that was sad to me next week. Good night, everyone. Hasta la bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, 
please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.